everybody, welcome to Mark's Remarks. Today I'm going to be making a chicken curry. I just a second thought of it, I might put some veg in there as well, but it's going to be just thrown onto a big bowl of chips. So chicken curry and chips, and I'll probably put some extra stuff in there. The chicken is going to be the... Uh, I bought these, I don't know when I bought it, but a couple of weeks, uh, let's see, it's 24, about a week ago. Bought these on the date of expiry. Uh, normal price, three quid. Got them down to 75p. So I got several of these. Um, I, I think I may have shown you last week. Now, it's frozen, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it up, or cut it out of the packet. I'm going to defrost it in the microwave. I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, I don't even. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a safe thing to do anyway. Because normally I would just leave these, leave it for a few hours to um, defrost. But the microwave is the way to take. Okay, it's uh, as you can see, it's a big, big frozen block. It's going to go. I put it in the microwave for high for. Uh, we'll try seven, seven minutes. And then, of course, I'll try and separate the pieces and then put it in for some more, more time. Okay, the chicken is just finished in the microwave. It hasn't come out too bad. Some of it appears... I put it in for seven minutes, as you saw. Um, some of it appears cooked, some of it appears raw. But I'm going to fry it in the pan, as I normally would. Now, I'm going to be using co-op crinkle crisps. Chips. Crinkle chips. Um, now these are going to be, let's see, 200, I'm going to do them in the air fryer as usual, 200 for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to put these in now, I'm going to put in a good amount I think, let's, let me see, yeah. Yeah, because I'm using quite a lot of chicken. I'm going to put quite a lot of chips in there as well. There we are. So that's going to go in the air fryer. About 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to get the chicken on the go. All right. I'm not going to uh, bother with the vegetables, I don't think. Not in this dish. I've got the heat on 10 out of 12. Put the chicken in. And then proceed, there you go, as you can see it's quite a lot of chicken, I'm right hungry today. Uh, right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this up into little pieces so it'll fry, I want it to fry fairly quickly and evenly and, uh, and also as you know, I'm always saying I want to cut it into bite sizes so I can just eat it with one hand, you know. There we are, nearly done. Then cutting up, uh, cutting up all the pieces in, into smaller bits into sugar cube sized chunks I guess or maybe a bit bigger just basically small chunks find a big bit cut it in half just go around <coughs> find another big bit cut it in half there you go it spreads the chicken further in the dish rather than having uh, just a few big chunks in your curry you've got several dozen tiny chunks which I, I like better you know Okay, that's all, that's pretty much done. Uh, I'm just going to heat this through, I'm not, I'll turn this down a little bit to nine. Yeah, just uh, heat this through till it's nice and brown, and then we'll go with the sauce. Right. It's getting there, slowly but surely. I've added a little bit more oil in there, and uh, what, what's, what's happening is, because the heat is so high, it's on nine out of twelve, the chicken is sticking to the bottom of the pan. But that's okay, because what you do, you get your spatula and just start scraping it. There you go. Scraping it off the uh, off the pan there, and then what happens is you get those uh, you get those brown flakes of chicken dotted around. You know, it's like like shredded chicken, but it's uh, been been darkened up a little bit more than the rest. That's fine. So uh, sticking to the bottom doesn't matter. Once you put the sauce in there, then uh, there'll be no more sticking meat to the top of the pan. Yeah, there you go. You can, you can see it. that is really good. It's a bit crispy, crispy shredded chicken. There you have it. The meat is nicely browned. You can see all that. All the darker bits there are the, the shredded 
chicken that stick to the pan and then you scrape it off and it's all good because it, it, it makes it nice and crispy there. All right, the next job is to move all the chicken to one side of the, the pan and then just empty all the, uh, there you go. So I've got it on the down, I don't know if you can see from that angle. Chicken on one side, fat drains down to the other. Get rid of it in its uh, in the excess oil container. There you go. I'm using a five litre tub. You can use a two litre, 500 mil, just basically top the, to cut the top off. Oh, you, I'm looking at the hot fat while I'm doing it. I didn't realize you couldn't uh, see that. There you go. Yeah, you can use any size bottle, but the important thing is you don't pour the oil down the drain. So that's why you pour it in here. There you go, so it's out of the way. Not causing any problems. What I'm trying to do is time the chicken and the time it takes to cook the sauce through with the chips. The chips are about another, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. So uh, there we go, here's the, the co-op brand chip. Chinese style chip shop curry sauce. I, I used this last week and uh, it's very nice. It's mild. Oh, tastes like tastes like curry. It's all good. Okay, so I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna not put it on the heat just yet. I'll do that just uh, when the when the chips are slightly browner. Because uh, I want to cook this through. Because remember, the chicken's cooked. So all I want to do is heat the sauce through. But I don't want to heat it too much because all the all the moisture in the sauce will evaporate, and I don't want it to be too thick. Okay, it's time to put the mixture <clears throat> back on the heat. There we are. As you can see, it's looking good. I'm going to put it on the heat. It's going to be a six out of twelve, so it's exactly halfway. I want this to heat gently through. Uh, because I'm going to try and time it with the chips. So if I start low, at least get it heated through. I can always blast the heat up nearer the time if necessary. There we are. And uh, and of course, I will, well, even sometimes I don't do this, but I try and have a habit of keeping the spatula or spoon not over here, because I've seen people do that and they walk into them over to the side like that, so you've got no chance of knocking it over. All right. Okay, the chips are done, nice and brown. <clears throat> there you go, it's a good amount of them as well. Yeah, I didn't bother going with the vegetables, not in this dish. But, uh, so I'll get this all, there you go. Okay, turn the heat off. It's bubbling away like mad. There you go. It's still got a lot of moisture. I haven't boiled it so much that all the moisture goes. It's still got a lot. So there we go. And just pour it over the over the chips. The trick I think with this dish is you've got to have a good ratio of chicken with the sauce. If you don't have enough chicken, then there'll be too much sauce. It won't be, you know, but this has got uh, a good amount. It's got a lot of chicken with a lot of sauce, and it's a good ratio. And there you have it. Chicken curry, chicken with curry, on a boatload of chips. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've had this sauce before, and so I know I like it. It's a co-op's own brand, and it costs a pound. Which is very good value. Hmm. Yeah, the chicken is very succulent. What I used to do is uh, basically, you know, cook all the meat, all the meat that I eat, cook it to a crisp, which is the way I like it. But I, I kind of like it soft and moist now. So I'm doing that for a while. Mm. There you go. Crinkle cut crisps have got a, a bit of a crispness to it. Very nice.
if you, I mean, there'll be little point putting uh, uh, hash browns in here because of the amount of potato. But you could put a load of peas in here, or sweet corn. I think that would work. I think I think that would go well with this. Anyway. There you have it. Quick and easy, very cheap, and thank you for watching.